Hey, how's it going? And today we're just taking a quick look at how you could create a keyboard input device. And of course, this has a lot of applications. This is actually based off of tutorial that Pi equals three had done on a chat system, but that wasn't what I was looking for. I was just looking for a basic input device. And so with some modifications, actually quite a few modifications, I just simplified it down to a keyboard for basic input. So it looks like this here. We come into the game, there's a mutator zone, and I cross the mutator, and there's our keyboard. And I think it looks really nice. It's very simple and minimalistic, so I can just type in hello space world. If I make a mistake, I can go back. And then if I hit enter, it prints a string up here. And based off of this enter, you could trigger it to do many other things. And then when you're done, you just go quit and on your way you go. So it's super cool. And I wouldn't be surprised if Epic doesn't come up with something like this, another device, an input text device because it's just so helpful for certain situations so anyway just have the mutator zone and the verse device and it's paired to the mutator zone and the rest of this is in the code so i'll just kind of go over this kind of quickly but we have our modules at editable we've got two maps and an array for the players here we have a ui for our text messages that keep changing we have essentially four function buttons and then our letter buttons and I just did a tutorial about how you can use go through a for loop and automate the creation of a UI and that's exactly what we've done here and that's what's so cool about this because that would be 26 buttons that normally like when you do a button you have to spell them out like this here we're actually spelling out our buttons Go down here, really, we're spelling out three of our buttons. Imagine if you had to do that for 60, uh, 26 buttons. It'd be, it'd be crazy. It wouldn't even be practical. So here we basically pair our player to uh, the UI and store it in a map. And then there's eight methods involved with this. So there's our create UI here. It's kind of a big one. Create our UI. And here's where we go through the for loop through our array of the string. This is actually a string we're going through. And then you can adjust these values to set it up. And so I just played around to get them where I liked them, all these different values. And it offsets once here, it offsets it once it gets to, this is how we create our rows. And then we have our space buttons, our main canvas, and here's our our three buttons here. And then here we do our binding with our, essentially we have four buttons, a space button, a backspace, an enter, and quit button. And then here are some more methods here for the key pressed, every time the key's pressed. Here's when the other buttons are pressed. It runs through some logic for them. And then each one of those usually calls a method down here like exit the keyboard, display the keyboard, delete the character, clear the input, and then update the text block. And so that's kind of it. It's uh, a little bit of work to set this up initially, but once you have it set up, then like I recommend you do is you would copy these out as a text file and then you have it easily available for any other projects that you're working on. And like I said, you could also go check out the tutorial that Pi equals three has done. And then I think he has GitHub with the original, the original code on there. But one thing I noticed on that original source code was the clear button wasn't working and it was because the text wasn't matching. So this whole thing is driven off of the strings matching up, like the lettering matching up. So how it really works is it gets the it gets the text off the button 
and if the text matches then it knows you want to do certain certain things so here you'll see get text and that's really the star of the show because it gets the text off of each button so here we set the text on our button here to back and then if you click that button and if the text matches it knows okay well then delete character and then it calls that method so this is very similar to something that is in Unreal Engine, the same kind of logic where you can see if the value on the button is matches the string. And then if it does, then you know, okay, that's they press a certain button, then go ahead and do these things associated with that button.